we've been closely following the sort of political discussion as well as the broader reaction, but this is relating to the political aftermath of the awful assassination attempt on Trump's life that led to the devastating loss of life of a supporter of Trump's who was at the rally. And one of the things, because I'm naive and stupid, apparently, that I briefly thought, as I've now described in a few segments, is, hey, maybe maybe these people saying we are going to use this as an opportunity to unite, lower the temperature, etc., that that actually could happen. Why would I think such a thing? Because uh, <laughs> it's not happening. And it, it's sad, as I said previously. So this brings... A few moments I want to show you. Jessica Tarlov, the liberal host on Fox News, is the five who's now uh, just serving as a pundit at the RNC. She did a really nice job of trying to snap her co-host out of their talking point, right-wing media echo chamber world that they're living in and bring to the surface some very real and justified conversations about the political rhetoric of MAGA. This becomes even more relevant, I think, as we learn that this is just where things stand now. We can be open to changing facts, people. Unlike what we're seeing within MAGA circles. It is true that as we learn more about Thomas Crooks, it becomes more and more likely he was actually politically on the right and then maybe looking for some demented uh, perception of fame or maybe he felt betrayed by Trump. We don't know. We'll see. Or he could be left wing. We could find out when the investigation concludes. Right now, registered Republican. There seems to be some issues with the donation thing that might not be accurate of him donating to a progressive cause. And Trump signs in the yard. The Trump campaign had identified his family as a pro-Trump household to direct advertising to. And he was wearing a pro-gun shirt whenever he attempted to assassinate Trump. So, Especially as that happens, I think it's very relevant to say, MAGA, whenever this happened on Trump, elected Democrats across the board, and I always make this distinction because it's an important one, not random people online, because random people online are always saying all sorts of crazy things in response to everything, so that would be hard to ever get an accurate sense of what's significant, but positions of power, elected Democrats, prominent Democrats universally have denounced the attack on Trump. Whereas, in the aftermath of attacks on Democrats, MAGA leaders, not random MAGA people online, but MAGA leaders mocked the bashing in of the skull of an elderly man, Paul Pelosi. The attempt to get to Nancy Pelosi and hold her hostage by this right-wing lunatic. And so, that's something that Jessica Tarlov brought up on the air in what I'm about to play for you. As a way of, again, trying to wake up her co-host to the fact that maybe y'all using this as an opportunity to say, see, this is why the left is evil. That's your way of uniting saying, see, cause they tried to take Trump off the ballot. They tried to prosecute Trump. They tried to impeach him. And now they tried to kill him. What? How is that the same they at all? Especially now that we know this red Republican who is super pro gun and the co-host didn't like it. I wanted clarity from President Biden on the bullseye comment. We'll watch the Lester Holt interview with interest. But nobody who's being an honest broker can possibly believe that the Democratic rhetoric is the problem here. So if the issue is that we're saying all the time that he's like Hitler and he's a threat to democracy. And by the way, J.D. Vance has also said that he's like Hitler and I guess he's redeemed now. But Donald Trump sent a fundraising email just last week that said Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. And only one of these candidates has inspired people who sent pipe bombs to leading Democrats across the country, who has inspired mass shooters. Talk about firing up the base. Donald Trump has been doing that since 2016. Remember when he said the Second Amendment people could take care of it? Right when he was talking about Hillary Clinton abolishing the Second Amendment and she'll get to appoint judges. He talked about, remember that congressman from Montana who body slammed a reporter and he said, he's my type. He re-truthed or whatever it was, a video of Joe Biden hogtied 
just oh, in my <laughs> That was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, that's Your hilarious. examples are so tiny. No, they're We're not. talking about an attempted assassination that that's... left a man dead. The, the, a, well, the shooter groomed and incentivized no by idea. a drumbeat of demonization. You, no idea you can what call people. No, no. You can call people Hitler. By. All you want, but you have to ask yourself, why would you? You have a right to say whatever you want. You can say, I'm a Nazi, I'm Hitler, but the question is, why would you? I would never. You cannot pretend that you did not know where it would lead. Trump laughs about a p picture of a hogtied Joe no. Biden on the back of a pickup truck. That is not demonization. That is a meme. And saying to Second Amendment people you could take care of it about Hillary Clinton, what is that, Greg? That was his opponent. That you was know, his political no, opponent. You know, the day before. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So... First of all, very few people. There's just so many things, and this is all so upsetting because <laughs> we're just right back to it. But here we go. I rarely hear people say Trump is Hitler because Trump isn't Hitler because Hitler's a separate person than Trump. What I hear people say is, as we all should be able to do like adults, is analyze history as a way of understanding the present and predicting the future, right? To understand if we condone this sort of rhetoric, these sorts of positions, this attack on democracy, let's learn not that that's going to be what happens, the historical example, which is why I rarely cite particular historical examples because people's brains break, which has a quick pause to my point there, but remember where I was. Um, I've said, if you're a regular viewer, and now you know why, have you heard me say many times, and you can think of historical examples, but I'm not going to cite a particular one. Because if I do say, like during Nazi Germany or something like that, people's brains explode. Now you know why, okay? Because this is what happens. But meaning, this is the reaction we see from people disingenuously. But back to my point, if you can't handle those sorts of historical comparisons or Trump using phrase like poisoning the blood and us saying, hey, that... That comes right out of Mein Kampf. Oh, interesting. Why would he choose to do that? And then we raise awareness about that, and then he keeps doing it. So interesting. Um, or the other examples we've gone through, that's not saying he's going to do what Hitler did. It's not saying he is Hitler. It's just trying to draw on history to make comparisons of different authoritarian ideologies, okay? But again, the reason I rarely ever use the term Hitler on this show is because people's brains melt whenever you say that. You're like, he's Hitler! Oh! You're right. Let's just never, let's just never understand the present through the lens of history. Because why, what's the possible insight we could get out of that? Especially when he purposefully uses rhetoric that is directly aligned. But, but, <laughs> I was... I was ready. I really was, okay? You saw this when I went on Piers Morgan. I'll show you a clip of that in a second, uh, some what I'm referring to, but I was willing to sort of do the whole, let's get your own house in order before you go judge or ask other people to make improvements type of thing. So even though obviously violent rhetoric is far more prominent, far more dangerous within MAGA circles, I was still willing to say, what could we do better as the pro-democracy movement in our rhetoric? Especially given that this was an attack on a MAGA person, Trump. So let's use it as an opportunity, regardless of the disproportionate nature of violent and heated rhetoric. Let's still do some introspection. But then MAGA said, no, we're not going to come to the table for that on our end at all. At all. Instead, we're going to try to convince our followers that each and every person who supports Biden personally was a part of that assassination attempt. It's so sad and deranged. As a reminder of this type of rhetoric, then we'll get to another Jessica Tarlov clip. This ad was put, put together some time ago when Laura Ingram denied that Republicans ever use violent rhetoric. Now, which Republican official or candidate has ever condoned or in any way encouraged any type of violent assault? Can you can you start naming them? I can't. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Knock the crap out of him. Maybe he should have been roughed up. They never name names because they can't. I want you to watch Nancy Pelosi and Jack. It'll be hard not to hit her with it, but I will bang it down. It's a crime punishable by death, is what treason is. Nancy Pelosi is guilty of treason and we want her out. They a crime punishable by death 
is what treason is, and Pelosi's guilty of treason is what Marjorie Green just said there if you didn't hear it. What? You can't call any more directly for death. What are you talking about? Never name names because they can't. That is a depiction of Representative Gosar carrying swords, attacking Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They never name names. Let's have trial by combat. Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. We will not go quietly into the night. Strike your fear in the hearts of liberals everywhere, folks. Get on the phone, call your congressman. You can lightly threaten me. I'm coming after you. Madison Cawthorn's coming after you. Everybody's coming after you. I don't think liberals thought this whole mask thing through. You better believe I'm coming with my Springfield XPS. The swamp isn't truly drained until we've nailed the hides of the alligators to the wall. They never name names. Because they can't. Second term kicks off with firing Ray, firing Fauci. I'd put the heads on pikes, right? I'd put them at the two corners of the White House as a warning. I should have the Lord and let's get right to the violence. That's what I'm You don't fight like hell. Let's get right to the violence, he said. You don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Now, which Republican official or candidate has ever condoned or in any way encouraged any type of violent assault? Can you, can you start naming them? I can't. Yeah. Uh, and can you find as many examples of prominent elected Democrats? No, you can't, because that's not the universal message as it is within MAGA. But I'm sure you could still find examples I would think are inappropriate and I would be willing to denounce because I'm capable of self-criticism and criticism of my movement, unlike these, uh, these individuals. Sorry that I'm so bummed. I'm just, this is so, this is so sad. Why are people so dishonest? I don't get it. We could have all just been like, hey, let's use it as an opportunity to actually unite instantly over. If you are not already subscribed to this channel, what are you doing? You're breaking my heart. But please do click that subscribe button. It's easy. It's free. And I appreciate it greatly. Back to the video. Here's more. I don't think that the programming necessarily needs to be changed. Oh, by the way, side note, if we are doing stats, 70% of politically motivated murders are from right-wing ideologies. I think that the speakers will certainly ingest what has happened and hopefully be responsible yeah, about it. But it's focusing on the border. It's focusing on crime. The themes of and his campaign, yeah, yeah. which uh, that totally makes sense to me. But I do want to push back on what David was saying about essentially saying that this is a problem that came from the Democratic side. And I would hope that we could take a little time off before we get to this. But the rhetoric out of the Republican side, out of Donald Trump himself or Don Jr. about the attack on Paul Pelosi, mocking him, making up a rumor that this was some gay sex event, right? And wasn't a terrible attack by someone who was politically motivated and could have taken his life. No. That is the genesis of this. This goes back to 2016. Well, you can chicken no. and egg this uh, no, all actually, the way back. Go so as a reminder, I'll say again. I'll give the final. Oh, and then I'll play this little snippet of my Piers Morgan appearance. Um, after Paul Pelosi, unlike, unlike what we've seen post attack on Trump, not just random people online, but powerful uh, leaders of the MAGA movement, like Trump himself, joked about the attack on Paul Pelosi. Trump's son, Don Jr., and lots of Republican elected Congress people were doing similar things. Don Jr. posted a photo of underwear and a hammer, or responded to a, someone who posted that, saying, ha ha ha, about going for Halloween as Paul Pelosi because Paul Pelosi was in underwear when he got attacked with a hammer. If you haven't watched that video, go watch it. It's not funny. It's an elderly man having someone swing as hard as they possibly can a hammer at his head, leaving him hospitalized for a significant period of time. And I went on with a guy named CJ Pearson, who's a MAGA person. I'll link my coverage of this, and you can also go watch the full thing on Piers Morgan Uncensored. But one of the things I said in the appearance was, hey, I'm trying to be as introspective as possible. 
even though we're learning that this is a registered Republican, super pro-gum, pro-Trump family, Trump signs in the yard, wearing a pro-gun influencer t-shirt whenever he did the assassination attempt, maybe influenced by the violent rhetoric of MAGA to think this is how you could even conduct yourself. But regardless, we'll keep waiting until the investigation concludes. Regardless, I'm still willing, just given the magnitude of this event, to acknowledge we shouldn't use as often these sort of metaphors that are fighting and and bullseye and stuff like that let's just even if it doesn't make that big of a difference because a deranged person is going to be deranged but let's just try to avoid that to be extra safe of course cj pearson did not want to engage in that Piers morgan actually ended up getting upset with him again you can watch that linked below but here was my closing statement um of this making a point that i've made a few times a word to to luke on that yeah, I think peers and the audience, what you're seeing is a big difference between the pro-democracy movement right now represented by the Democratic Party with its flaws and this current MAGA ideology. When someone who I've spent every day talking about the flaws of being Trump, when someone such as him is attacked, universally people in positions of power elected democrats are able to recognize the attack that that was on democracy and we believe the threat that is posed by the maga ideology to democracy should be prevented through democracy which is why we're against this and that reaction biden denouncing it immediately wanting this to see justice comes in stark contrast to the conspiracy theories we heard from elected republicans not random people on the internet post january 6th what we're hearing here from CJ wanting to further divide and spread falsehoods and what we saw in the aftermath of the Paul Pelosi attack. One side incapable, incapable of denouncing this sort of violence, the other very able to. And I think that's uh, quite the indictment of the two ideologies. Okay. And then CJ jumps in. You can watch all that in the linked video below. But that's it. Even seeing how powerful Democrats have handled this moment compared to similar moments in times gone by with powerful Republicans is quite the representation of the difference between the two movements. The willingness to condone political violence versus universal condemnation. And I'm not ignoring that there have been people online, like as CJ brought up at one point in this, streamer Destiny saying insane, insane, deranged things worthy of condemnation. Absolutely. But again, people online, hard to know what matters out there because it's a lot of people saying everything all the time with how many people are online. Whereas if you break it up into those people in positions of power, understanding the power structures of the two movements, then you really do see just quite the contrast between the willingness to support versus oppose political violence. Let me know what you thought of that in the comments. Were you slightly hopeful that we were going to unite more than we were, than we're now seeing? Or were you thinking from the beginning, yeah, that's not going to happen. Okay, we've learned enough that that's not going to happen no matter what goes on. And uh, if you want to get an extra episode of the show daily, you can do so by clicking the join button below.